Well, uh, for one, I am just uh, preparing for the job. I, I continue to have briefings with the DFA. I would like to understand the, the total picture that we're, we have to contend with. Uh, I have to know the various uh, what uh, nuances of, of the issue. Uh, I know that uh, we are just simply waiting now for the decision of the International Tribunal uh, on the matter that we brought up to uh, them uh, or to it. And uh, people are are expecting that uh, we might be winning this case, although there is no guarantee about that. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there is also a strong possibility, if not even probability, that uh, China will win this case. Yeah. Uh, so I, I do not want to uh, what raise the, the hopes of, of our people too high and then at the end of the day, you know, uh, things do not seem to uh, turn out the way we wanted. Uh, but so, right now, is there already a plan on how to go about it and how to deal with China? Uh, well, China has said that it was not going to respect the decision. Yeah, they're pretty much firm on their position. For us, on the other hand, we tell China that if the decision is in their favor, we will respect it. Uh, we are signatories to UNCLOS and uh, we believe in the rule of law. And, and, and so we will respect that. On the other hand, uh, if, if it's the decision favorable to us, is favorable to us, uh, China has said that they will not respect that, yeah, even if they are signatories to UNCLOS. So uh, what we would like to do at this point in time is to uh, await for that decision and, and, and maybe perhaps get into a thorough study and analysis of that decision in terms of its implications. What does it mean if we win the case? What does it mean if uh, uh, China wins the case? Because we know uh, at the onset that uh, the UNCLOS court does not have uh, an enforcement capability with respect to the decision that it will make. At least in so far as China winning this case, uh, they don't have to worry about enforcement because we will respect that decision. The problem is when we will win, they will not respect the decision. So there must be ways and means at which uh, we would be able to, uh, to implement the decision uh, in, in the mutual interest of both countries. There are big concerns, though, by experts saying that going, the, going this path, bilateral talks, would undermine our actions in bringing this case to the UN and possibly winning the case. What I are wouldn't your thoughts want on to, that? I wouldn't want to, to say that on a categorical basis. I mean, uh, we, we know, for instance, that the best way to settle disputes like this is always through bilateral or negotiations. Or bilateral talks or negotiations. Even if for so long we've tried and uh, oh, nothing oh, we, concrete has sure, come sure. out. Sure, I mean, what, are your, what, what is your option? You see, uh, uh, of course, we, we have the United States who, who will back us up under the uh, treaties and agreements that we have. Or what they call a multilateral approach where we have all these claimants coming together. That is correct. But even if you have a multilateral approach, if China will also not respect whatever you arrive at with these other claimants, then you've got a problem. So really, uh, the most important thing now for us is to uh, make sure that we fully understand the implications of whatever decision uh, the arbitral tribunal would come about and then be prepared uh, for bilateral talks with, with China. As it is now, I understand that China does not want to speak with us. Uh, but then uh, that's their prerogative. Uh, we would like, however, to see better signals uh, once the, the uh, decision comes about. And uh, you can rest assured that we will never reject any opportunity or possibility for negotiations. Now, looking at this foreign policy, it seems that there are some tinges of a very nationalistic approach of a moving in. Is this the right time to do that now, to, be, to kind of cut ties with allies? Well, uh, in carrying out our uh, foreign policy, we must always be independent uh, in doing so. And the paramount uh, concern that the Constitution mandates is that when we carry out that foreign policy, we must always look towards the uh, interests, uh, the national interests. Uh, and so that this, the, these are the fundamental parameters at which we will proceed. Nationalistic uh, considerations must be seen in that context. But there are certainly areas where we can come up with what is mutually 
in the interest of both uh, countries or the countries concerned. So this is also something consistent with the Constitution. But to just simply say that we must be nationalistic uh, and, and, and then forget that to be nationalistic can sometimes be against the national interest, we will not pursue that. I think the big challenge would be really balancing these two superpowers' interests. You have China and the U.S. How do you see this playing out? Well, uh, for one, I do not know how to ballet, but I, you're right. Uh, we, we, we have to really uh, make sure that we are patient, we are understanding, we know where each one is coming from, we fully understand the, the, the interest of the other side as they, uh, we would hope that they will also understand our interest. But I think, and I'm very optimistic, that the room for negotiations especially quiet negotiations, even using back channels, will be one of the most powerful tools that we could use in this regard. Malaysia took notice when incoming President Rodrigo Duterte mentioned about that he will be renewing claims on Sabah. So, and then he, all, he also mentioned um, last night that he would be doing this through peaceful means. How are we, gonna be how are we go going to be approaching that? Well, uh, Sabah is an entirely different matter. We have not abandoned our claim. Uh, the law has, has, has preserved that claim for us. And so I do not believe that uh, for anyone to abandon that claim that he or, or, or she would be treading on something that is legal or constitutional. So uh, when, when, the, when the president uh, articulated his interest in uh, renewing our claims or reviving our claims with, 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 uh, in so far as Saba is concerned, I, I think, uh, and I'm sure he meant it in the context of seeing how both Malaysia and the Philippines will be able to resolve this issue, which uh, has since been placed in the back burner. Perhaps, uh, well, one of the interests that uh, President Duterte is also trying to pursue is to, uh, is to make sure that our, our ASEAN integration and, uh, and, and, and our uh, projections or plans of achieving a a, 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 an economic development of that area known as BIMP Iaga, which is the East Asian Growth Area, uh, will also be uh, undertaken and maximized because when, when people are less discontented, when people are happy, when people can live together in peace because uh, you know, of, of, of progress and development, even national borders becomes the least issue, becomes the least contentious issue. Maybe we can come up with some kind of a joint arrangement in that regard. But again, of course, we have to protect the national interest. So we cannot abandon that claim for now. But let's see how we can proceed steadily forward in making sure that that issue is resolved. Big challenges ahead for yes. your officer. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you too, Jean.